Oh hi everyone, welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. Well, this here is a Katoni Aster. Now you might remember this came as part of that big package or big parcel that I received over the Christmas period. Now Katoni Asters are a shrub, uh, so there isn't really a, a true form of a tree that you can follow when it comes to styling these. So, you know, I figured <laughs> let's just go crazy. Let's go abstract with this one and just try to do something really funky and wild and, and kind of just see where it grows or, or how it grows and where it takes us. Uh, yeah, the branches are in a really weird fashion, but the, the thing is, I mean, as they grow and thicken up, I might cut them back. And of course, we have secondary branching coming in. Hopefully, you know, if this tree recovers, it you know, has had a bit of a strange root base on it. So hopefully those little feeder roots develop and it does become a nice tree. But yeah, it's a weird one for sure. Uh, maybe in the future I do a bit of carving work down the front. Uh, we have a bit of a wound in here, so I'll see what I can do with that. But yeah, all in all, it's, um, it's a very strange tree. Now, um, you might be wondering why I didn't record myself doing this, and you know, it would have made for an interesting video. Now, the reason for that is it just keeps on raining. It just keeps on. I mean, the last couple of weeks has just rained and rained and rained. And the thing with that is I haven't been able to get out here in the garden and kind of do my usual thing. Uh, has meant I've had to go out into the greenhouse. But as you can see in the greenhouse here, it is a little bit packed. Now it's quite tight for space in here and it's, it's hard enough, you know, working on a tree, let alone having a tripod and a camera and filming all of this. But you can see there's quite a few trees that I've repotted. Some are small. I mean, that's the Hebe's there. We have a little Tamarex there that I've repotted. Uh, the two larches that I think you saw in the video. That's the Japanese maple. Uh, there's a hemlock there that I've repotted. That's the uh, giant redwood. It's been planted in an ashtray. So yeah, it's quite cramped working in the greenhouse, as you could probably imagine. So yeah, having a tripod and trying to film in those is no one impossible. But I've, I've done what I can, and uh, yeah, it's um, I've just managed. <laughs> There's the things you have to do, eh? Um, but anyway, moving on. This was another tree that I recently repotted, and this is the Norway spruce. So if we just take these rocks away, again, these are just in place just to hold the tree in the pot all the while the little roots are developing and uh, establishing themselves in the pot. So we can see straight off the bat, this tree has an ugly root. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't repot a Norway spruce at this time of year. I would wait until much later in the year. Well, the other day in between rain showers, I had a look at this, uh, this tree. Originally, it was growing in one of those black sort of drum pots and of black plastic drum pots and I could see a little a little thing w wiggling around on the surface so I dug down and it was a, a little grub so I thought oh god you know this has been um, infested so I, I gently eased the tree out of the pot and lo and behold in you know mixed in with the soil was all of these little grub type things and I thought well that's not going to be good for the roots so really this uh, repot of this uh, spruce was more of a case of an emergency than uh, than anything else but what I did discover is it did have a very weird root system and you had this big root going around now if you kind of imagine you can see this root coming down and around well this looped all the way around the trunk so you had a few fine roots coming off the base at the bottom of the trunk and it does it does flare out I mean it doesn't have the worst base root base in the world but yeah this root went all the way around the trunk and the problem was a lot of roots were coming off of that piece of root so if I cut this completely off, I'd only be relying on, you know, half a dozen very fine feeder roots uh, along the bottom of the actual tree. And you'd be cutting away a lot of the root mass. Now, with all of this foliage up top, that is a big risk and a big gamble to, to take. So what I thought instead is, why cut it off? You know, sometimes an ugly feature can actually be the greatest asset. I mean, as they say, you know, your imperfections can be turned around to become one of your greatest features. You know, if you don't kind of twist things around to your advantage, then you, you just get yourself down about them and can kind of get yourself depressed. You know, some of the ugliest features can be spun around to actually become great attractive features. So I thought, well, maybe we can do that with this tree. Again, that root looks kind of weird, kind of strange. But over time, we might have more roots coming off of it. And it will just add to it, you know, add, make an interesting feature for the tree. 
Um, again, it doesn't follow all of the conventions within the bonsai world as to how you style a root base, and it might not necessarily look the same as the trees that you see in nature. But, you know, sometimes trees grow in weird, wacky ways. And uh, sometimes you just have to go with what a tree gives you as opposed to trying to push upon it different styling ideas that you want it to have. You know, and this is the balance that you have with bonsai. So this project, now you might remember uh, back last summer, I uh, cut up that Hebe's bush, that, or that kind of root base, I guess. I uh, will put a link to that video just up here, but that, uh, yeah, it didn't look good in the beginning. And I was hoping that maybe if I cut it up into little pieces and plant it up as somewhat of a little forest, then maybe it might recover. Well, sadly, it hasn't. So we can see, I mean, we do have a bit of a weed running here, but even so, most of these have rotted. You can see the bark is starting to rot away. The roots have rotted. They're not looking good. They're all rotted down below. They're just, yeah, if we take this one out, just take a look at the root base. It's, it's not very good. The roots, it's just died. I mean, it's not, it's not good at all. There's no new roots on that. It's, um, yeah, you can see it's just breaking. It's, it's completely dead. It's not good at all. All of these have just rotted away. And yeah, it, it wasn't good to begin with. So, you know, it was a bit of a gamble, this one. You know, if you don't try some of these things, you never know. But yeah, this one is a goner for sure. So this here is a piece of deadwood for Andy's uh, Tanuki challenge. What I was thinking is, could this go into this pot? Now, obviously, we can see that this piece of deadwood is too big. You know, it's, it's too big to, to actually go in the pot. But does would that matter? What if we had this in such a way, if I spin this around this way, we can imagine that if this was like this, you'd have this root coming out the back and this root coming out the front. Would that look strange? So, yeah, this I thought was quite an interesting idea. I've never seen a tanuki where the piece of deadwood is actually coming over the pot. Now, I kind of imagined it a bit like... Um, you know Bob Ross, Bob Ross's show The Joy of Painting, where he did those paintings in ovals. Like he put that sticky tape on the canvas and then he painted a, a painting. And then once he pulled the sticky tape off, he painted a tree that went outside of the, the barrier, outside of the barrier or the painted area. And it's breaking the fourth wall. I thought, well, maybe we can do the same thing with the tanuki. What if the tanuki came over the pot? So you had like this, this root here coming over the front and then of course the trees the ash trees that's going to use they'll be planted in in the uh, in the pot and of course they'd have a lot more room to grow and uh, their roots would be able to establish and really have plenty of space to grow inside the pot so yeah strange idea for sure i've never seen anything like that but i do think if i clear out this pot get rid of some of these then that might be the way forward but yeah let, let me know what you think on this idea and uh, we will move to the next stages of turning this piece of deadwood into the, uh, the ancient ash tree tanuki. Yeah, it's sure going to be interesting. Well, let me know what you guys think. I mean, do you think this is a good idea, having a tanuki that comes over the pot and maybe the roots drape over the side of the pot? I've never seen that before. I've never seen anybody do that. So, you know, I thought, why not give it a go? Why not try something a little bit different, be a bit you know, a bit, a bit odd, a bit strange, you know, I kind of like trying out these strange projects. But yeah, be interesting to hear what you guys think. You know, do drop a comment down below and, and uh, yeah, give us your thoughts on the idea. Anyway, guys, I just thought I'd share with you a few updates of what I've been up to uh, in between showers <laughs> because it keeps on raining. But uh, yeah, hopefully uh, it does stay dry for long enough that I'll be able to do a bit more filming like this, work on some projects and just give you some more updates. Anyway, guys, until next time, take it easy, have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.